Hi, and welcome back to another Studio One version 5 video. In this video, I am going to revisit the topic of tempo mapping. Now, there are two ways to tempo map in Studio One version 5. One of them is what I would call the traditional manual method, which has improved over the years. And there's also the way to do this with Melodyne 5, which I will not cover in this video, but I do plan on doing a second video on tempo mapping that shows how to do this using Melodyne. So in this example, I have a recording of multi-track drums that was recorded without a click. So over time, it drifts a little bit off the original tempo. And that tempo is about 110. If we set the tempo to 110, then you'll start to see or you can hear that it drifts. You can see right here, here's a kick. It's drifting off. So I'll play a little section of this and I'll engage the metronome so you can hear that it's off. And that's because it's breathing. It's a natural performance of this drum track. So in order to work on this, we need to first of all make sure that all of our tracks are set not to follow tempo changes because we are going to manipulate the tempo track. We don't want any kind of time stretching or shifts in this part. So to do that, I will select all of the tracks like this with a shift select, open the inspector. You can click here or press I to open the inspector. And at the top, we have follow, time stretch, or don't follow. We'll set that to don't follow. If I do that with the tracks all selected, you'll see that all of them are now set to don't follow. So that's step one. Step two is to open the tempo track, which looks like a clock. And if you know your approximate tempo, and I suggest you try to figure it out, there is a way to figure it out by marking a few measures, but it, it'll save you a couple of steps if you get it approximately right by just using a tap tempo app or something like that. In this file, I knew that it was about 110, so I put in 110 here, which sets this tempo at this mo node right here to 110. You can do the same thing by rewinding and then set your tempo down in the transport area to your original tempo. Now the way this works is we're going to add tempo nodes to this track. So you can see that the song starts right here. And we are going to basically drag the bar markers or the measure markers to line up with the kick or the snare on these multi-track drums. And the way we do that is you go right to the line where you, so you get this finger pointer. We also want to have snap turned on right here with N. And we're gonna drag this pointer. What that snap does is allows you to snap right to the bar marker with this finger, hold command, and it shifts to this. This cursor then allows you to drag the actual bar marker and drop it right at the onset of the transient for, in this case, the kick. So when I let go, I have now adjusted that first bar to line up with that transient. Then as we move on through here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and you'll see at bar four, we have another one that's a little bit off. Hold down command and drag, let go, and it puts in another tempo change. And here you can see the tempo is 109 point some odd random digits there. So we've got a very accurate setting for that tempo. So I'm going to click on the timeline to position the cursor in this area. And it does help to have your system set up to have a shortcut to advance one bar or to go forward one bar. By default, that's set to the equals key in the top row of your keyboard. So if I hit equals, you can see the cursor jumped to the next bar. The tempo is about right. That will get us close to where we need to be to put in the second one. I'll hold command and adjust this to the onset of that next transient. Very easy process compared to the way it was before. Now, one 
other thing is that you can actually snap to the transients. To do that, we need to actually get the transient showing. So I'll select both tracks, right click, and right here, show bin markers. Now there aren't any bin markers, but you can just choose detect transients. I've done it recently, so it's in my recent actions, but you would go to audio, detect transients, and it will run that transient detection process. You'll see that worked pretty well on this particular case. If it didn't work that well, you could open the audio bend panel and adjust the threshold here to get those transients to show the way. But the default setting worked just fine in this particular case. So from now on, all we really need to do is advance a bar and then hold down command and now it will just snap to that transient. Because of that, I don't necessarily have to be zoomed in quite so much. I'll use equals to go to the next bar, hold command, and we'll do this for a few more bars. So the idea here is you're not clicking to add the marker. You hold command first, get this tool, start dragging, and when you drop, your tempo change will be inserted right at that point. We're going to do a couple more of these. You'll see that they drift slightly. Let's just zoom in and see how this goes. Perfect. So now we're out at bar 13. I'll add another one here. And now we're going to back up. You can see, especially if we expand this track, you can see all of these very small tempo changes. Now if I play back through this area, you'll hear that the click is nice and tight with each transition. All right, so the rest of the process is really just working your way through the entire song until you have all of these in. One thing I want to point out is that you're not limited to putting these in at the individual downbeat. You can also put these on the actual beat. So here's a snare. If I wanted to tighten it up even at the beat level, I can do that as well. So you can create your tempo map accurate right down to the snare level. Now this technique does not affect the audio, the tempo, or anything about the original source material. It's only really adjusting the view of the timeline to make the measures and bars line up to your song. That way, as you add more things like loops or MIDI content to it, it will all follow this tempo. So I'm going to move on and put these in for the rest of the song, and then I will be back when that's finished. All right, so I am out at bar 58 right now, and the workflow that I tend to use because I'm on MacBook Pro that has a trackpad is that I can pan with two fingers, and if I just give the little two-finger push like this. There's a little bit of momentum in this panning behavior. I also have my trackpad set up that three fingers does a drag. So I do a little nudge with my two fingers, my middle finger, my ring finger, and then I hold down control. And then with three fingers, I'm grabbing and doing this drag movement. So while it's nice to have the ability to move forward by one bar, if you're using that technique, that's not even really necessary. It is important to have snap enabled. And the reason you have snap enabled is so that the starting point snaps right to the bar or the beat that you want. So we'll snap this here. You'll see the tempo is 109. It's really varying fairly little. 
but enough that it drifts without a tempo map, which would be the case of almost any live performance that's not recorded to a click or a grid. Now in this case, and sometimes when you have a fill, you'll notice that the snare drum is the one that's on the beat if I play that. So then in that case, I just have to be careful. I don't just blindly tie that to the next kick. The other thing is if you get one, some of these points in and you don't want them, you can either highlight them like this and just hit delete. Or if you click on them with a right click, then you can hit delete here. So when you get to the end of the song, you need to use some judgment to figure out where these beats should line up. Often the song goes somewhat out of a straight timing at that point. And that looks like that sets it up to be in pretty good alignment. All right, let's zoom out and see what we've got. So here is our tempo map if we spread this out. And now we are ready to add more parts to it. There is the ability to also export a tempo map by exporting MIDI. You would do that by going to File, Save As, and then change this to one of the two MIDI file formats, depending on what you need to import later. And that will pick up, of course, all of your MIDI tracks, but will also pick up the tempo map. I use a lot of different digital audio workstations, and some of them have very good features for doing this. Cubase has a very good feature, as does Logic. But I think the capability in Studio One is just as nice, just as quick as in those digital audio workstations. And of course, the Melodyne approach gives you much finer control over this. And I'll show you that in another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments.